Come out, wherever you are. Who is it? <laughs> Just joking, Jackie boy, we know it's you. Say, Wendy dear, we should try going out the window. Oh, sure, you can go first. Of course you're stuck. You've been a series of disappointments thus far. Let's keep it going. Let me come in. Helping right now? You're fucking yelling. My god, you are ruining this moment for me. It's a beautiful moment. You're ruining it! Seriously, the hand. That was the best call for you. You know what? I have to go. I have a movie fuse to do. And unlike you, I can fit through the window because I'm not weighed down by overacting. It's Stephen King's The Shining versus Stephen King's 1408 on Movie Fuse. have a lot in common. They're both books based on Stephen King, both take place in a haunted hotel room, and both have a small cast of characters with the leads being struggling writers. 1408 rests almost entirely on John Cusack's character Mike Enslin, an author who makes his living staying at supposedly haunted hotels and B&Bs. His character isn't very compelling, but Cusack does a good enough job selling the crazy scenes unfolding around him. Samuel, I don't turn down a role Jackson manages the hotel Enslin eventually arrives at. Jackson is almost always fun to watch and here is no different. I just wish he had more screen time. On the Shining side of things, we have Jack Nicholson in one of his most powerful performances to date as Jack Torrance. It's a joy watching him descend into madness over the course of the picture. He absolutely owns every scene he's in, and whenever the camera lingers away, I can't help but feel let down. Especially whenever that screen is filled with his wife, Wendy. Shelley Duvall is so comically over the top, it hurts certain moments of the picture for me. I understand this is a weak woman who has put up with years of verbal and possibly physical abuse by her alcoholic husband, but her transformation as a strong mother never really happens. Instead, she mostly screams and makes incredibly odd facial experiences expressions. Thankfully, her son Danny, played by Danny Lloyd, absolutely crushes it. His imaginary friend, his special abilities, and his hot wheeling rides through the hotel are amazing. I could have watched two hours of him conversing with himself in that disturbing voice. Scatman Crothers gets a decent sized role too as one of the hotel staff members who also has the shining ability. And since he's a black man in an 80s horror film, naturally he has to die. This is a bit ironic considering director Stanley Kubrick changed the story's ending from the book because he didn't want his scary movie to be full of cliches. Instead opting for another trope. Let's talk about it more in story. The premise is very similar. An author chooses to stay at a haunted hotel for inspiration to write his next great book. Once the building blocks are in place, however, the movies branch off quite a bit, but madness of the mind is, is definitely the theme in both. Since The Shining is a Kubrick joint, it's of course chock full of symbolism and hints at a larger lingering story. When Jack and his family decide to shack up in a hotel for the winter months, things start out fine enough. They are warned that one of the rooms is off limits as there was a murder there and strange happenings have taken place. This becomes more and more apparent as Danny gets visions via the shining of this aforementioned room. Meanwhile, Jack is losing his goddamn mind. The house is mentally breaking him and he turns to the only thing that gives him comfort, the booze. Granted, the hotel is fresh out, so this is another one of those cases where he's doing this shit in his head, but the effects are all too real. By the end of the picture, Jack is full-blown crazy, attacking his wife and child and murdering the cook. The film's ending's a puzzler for some, as the camera zooms into a black and white photo of Jack in a different time period. The idea is that Jack, no matter what incarnation of him exists, is somehow tied to this hotel, linked, bonded, he's the caretaker, and eventually he will die by his own undoing. It's an interesting concept, but perhaps a bit too vague for the general moviegoer. It's also possible I interpreted this entirely wrong, which I'm sure will be corrected in the comments. 1408 is far less confusing and very straightforward. The majority of the picture takes place in the titular room with about 20 minutes of setup. Mike Enslin has made his living at staying at hotels that are supposedly haunted, but he hasn't witnessed anything much more than a creaky floorboard. Not until his six plus hour stay at 1408, a room that's been forbidden to get 
IS for years and is responsible for at least 42 deaths of documented and undocumented visitors. Mike has seen it all, so when things start to go south in the room, he shrugs it off as simple parlor tricks. That changes pretty quickly when this room from hell starts attacking him mentally, reminding him of a brutal past death and his broken relationships. The ending's a bit of a trickster to talk about as there's at least three different versions that were shot and released. This was done intentionally as the Bloodline director thought the ending should have been left open to fit more with King's vision. So in some of our endings our hero dies, and in others he lives. A bizarre, albeit clever way to keep people talking and engaged in the film, and to keep its ending vague and open for interpretation. Unlike my Aunt Rosette, The Shining is a beautiful film that's aged gracefully. It's not a scary film, but more of a psychological thriller. There are some spirits and horror elements, but they are done practically and kept to very quick cuts for the most part. The hot naked woman shifting into a bloated dead corpse is one of the most confusing boners I've ever had. There's great imagery afoot here, with blood rushing from elevators to a nighttime chase through a hedge maze. The axe through the door is one of the most iconic scenes in movie history, but I had way more enjoyment watching Jack's final book reveal to see what he's been writing this whole time. I couldn't figure out how Duvall knew which pages to turn and rip to see the message all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. Turns out she didn't need to know as it was typed out on all 500 pages of the manuscript. Kubrick, being obsessed with perfection, hired a secretary for months to type this shit out on all pages in different formats. That's dedication and it shows in the final product. And that's just a small glimpse into his process. The shooting of the film was to be done in 100 days, but easily doubled that at 250, with some takes going upwards of 140 times. And the music puts this thing on another level. Kubrick, taking inspiration from himself, decides not to use almost any of the pieces that were originally composed for this flick, instead opting to go back to a more 2001 Space Odyssey style. The term hauntological was used to describe it as the score shifts and changes with our protagonist's psychological condition. It's the same term the ladies use when referring to sexual encounters with me. Hauntological. I have no ladies. I don't think 1408 is performing on the same stage as The Shining. I do, however, think it's a well-made movie that is worth a watch. It's a more effects-heavy outing for sure, taking advantage of some of the accoutrements of 2007's technology. I was impressed upon a rewatch of just how much happens in this small hotel room and how it all manages to feel real. Everything from the fear of standing on a thin ledge, freezing in a poorly heated environment, drowning in an unexplicable flood, being chased by a zombie in a vent, and seeing projections of past tenants all seem real. In part because of Cusack's great reactions, but also we cannot forget the amazing work done by the sound, the stage, and the effects departments. The music by Gabriel Yared complements all these events. The orchestral pieces explode with tension and help sell the events unfolding in front of the viewer. Hope you enjoyed your stay. It's time to check out. Had to get some lame hotel puns in. The Shining to some is unbeatable when it comes to tension and shock, much like me again in the sack. I have nothing. I think it's a movie full of great camera work, terrific performances, a brilliant score, and an amazing setting. It also has Shelley Duvall! 1408, on the other hand, is perhaps too by the books as far as horror films go. It's well made and Cusack is on point, but nothing really stays with you when it's over. Shining is the easy winner for me, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. So leave a comment, vote for your winner, and remember, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. And stay tuned, I have some fan-requested episodes coming up uh, from my Patreons. When you support Adam Does Movies at a certain threshold over there at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, you can get your own episode request done. I'll do a Movie Feud, an Adam rant. Uh, really anything <laughs> your, your heart desires. Sick things. Sexual things. I, I'm basically a prostitute on the internet. And it's, it's disgusting, it's sad, it's depressing. Much like my aunt. But we're, we're not, that's neither here nor there, nor over there. I'm rambling. Thank you.